Okay. Record on the cloud. And I'm going to mute myself and you can start sharing. Guys, we do not have many people today, so um, feel free to unmute yourself and ask questions, but maybe at the end of the presentations, presentation. Okay. Yeah, sounds good. Well, thank you both for, for coming today and hopefully the, uh, this will be a useful recording for many other students that were unable to get here today. Um, so yeah, let's hop in. Uh, my name is Will Leadingham. I'm the program manager for student recruitment and marketing at Highline College in Washington State. Um, let me go ahead and share my screen. We can get um, a presentation going here. Oh, you'll see the end of it here if I'm not careful. All right. Um, yeah, so I am with Highline College. And I think a good start today would be to hop into um, kind of an overview. But today's, today's title is Discovering Opportunities at U.S. Community College. So the things that I'll be covering will be applicable to uh, community college in general, for those of you who are unfamiliar. Um, but we will also talk specifically about Highline College. So what is offered at U.S. community colleges, quite a bit actually. Um, the, our main offerings are two-year degrees and we call those associate degrees. And we also offer four-year degrees. Uh, more and more colleges are offering these. Uh, we have about nine and we call these bachelors of applied science degrees. Um, we, we'll take a look at some of ours uh, later in the presentation. Community colleges also offer something called professional and technical programs, as well as certificate programs, which could be um, as, as quick as one year. And what these are both designed to do is to get students into the workforce, okay? So both of these degree types or certificate types are preparing students for work. Um, so they're giving you hard technical skills um, to get you right into the workforce, whether that's in the US or at home. Um, now, for any students that are interested in master's courses, you can come to a community college and prepare for your university master's program by taking the prerequisite coursework necessary for that master's program. Uh, so a lot of American students will do this. It saves a lot of money by taking these courses at a community college. Actually, one of my best friends um, is in medical school now at the University of Washington, which is either uh, the, the best or second best in the country. And he came back to a community college to take courses before enrolling in medical school. Um, so very, very common. Uh, we also offer something just in Washington State called high school completion program. And what this gives you is in two years, as you can see, you get your, your two year associate degree as well as your high school diploma in just in just two years. So the nice thing about um, Highline College is that you have zero additional requirements to get this high school diploma. Um, you just have to opt in. So if you're 16 years old, you can start at Highline College and get your two-year degree and your high school diploma in just two years. Um, very popular program for both American students um, who are in high school and are international students. So this sometimes sounds too good to be true, but um, it is a real program. I actually did this when I was in high school for one year. So you might be familiar with why people come to a community college. Affordable tuition is one of the main uh, reasons because we are about half the cost of most university uh, tuition. So uh, we'll look over at the prices later, but for one year, one academic year, it's just under $11,000. Um, and we also have small class sizes. So most community colleges are around 25 students uh, per class. We have about 17 as our average, so even smaller than the average. Uh, this kind of fosters a, a different learning environment uh, that you won't get at the university um, unless it's a private institution, uh, usually um, your first and second year. Okay, so uh, this, is, this is really great because you're engaged with your classmates, you're engaged with your professor, 
and you get to know them. Um, so you're, you're really interacting a lot more in the classroom. Um, in addition, at community college, you're going to get more personalized care and attention. So as an international student, there's a lot of things you're dealing with, right? It's a new language, a new culture, a new environment. Um, there's, there's, you're away from home and friends. Uh, so it's really nice to have that extra attention from um, myself and my colleagues, um, as well as in the classroom, um, like I just mentioned. So you're going to get a lot more attention your first and second year at a community college. Um, we also increase the opportunity for our students to enter a prestigious uh, institution, a university, uh, to finish their bachelor's degree. So if you're in um, you know, Kazakhstan now and you're in high school and you're, you're getting ready to graduate and you apply to a university, let's say, in the United States, you can either apply directly now um, or you can go into a community college first and show the university that you are a capable um, asset uh, of a student to the university. So this gives you a chance to prove yourself, get a good GPA, get involved in campus, uh, volunteer, perhaps work, um, work, get involved in some student clubs and organizations. Um, and this will significantly increase your ability to get into that, that difficult uh, university. Um, so you're, you're really giving yourself a chance to prove your abilities uh, by coming to a community college. Uh, we also have partnerships with universities. Uh, sometimes they're referred to as transfer admission guarantee uh, agreements that we have. So we have about 12 schools, 12 universities that we partner with. Um, these schools allow easier entrance into the university. Um, as long as you graduate from Highline College with your associate's degree and you meet a minimum GPA. And we'll hop into that in a little more detail as well. Uh, so again, this is the last slide about what community college is. I think this is a really good way to, to frame it. So if you, we like to talk about it as two plus two because you do two years at Heinlein and two years at a university and you're still getting your bachelor's degree. Okay, so this is just a visual example. You've come to Heinlein College year one, year two, get your AA or associate's degree, uh, which is equal to or the same as a four-year university uh, for year one and year two. So these two years are foundation courses, okay? So let's say I'm taking a business program and all of you tuning in are taking uh, biology. That's, that's going to be your major. Well, in this first and second year, we're st still going to have English, math, um, history classes together. Um, and once you go into year three and year four at university, that's when we will split off. I will be all in my business program taking business courses and you all will be taking science uh, various science coursework. Um, so year one, year two, transfer to university, year three, year four, and you complete your bachelor's degree. So hopefully that is helpful. Two plus two is a good way to remember uh, these programs. So I'm going to hop into Highline a little bit. Um, and where are we located? We are in um, Washington State, which is in the Pacific Northwest, um, not Washington, D.C., where our um, formerly cool president was living. Um, we are 20 minutes south of downtown Seattle. Um, so, and 10 minutes from our international airport. So we're, we're very centrally located and um, very close to Seattle downtown. So this is just another map. I wanted to give you a sense of what is around our area. It's a really cool location. So you've got the ocean water. You can see the Pacific Ocean coming in and all of this ocean water comes into what we call the Puget Sound. So this is, you'll see this in one of the photos. It's visible from campus and, and very close. Um, we have a Olympic National Park here, which is rainforest, tons of outdoor activities to do. And we're surrounded on the other side to the east by the Cascade Mountains. Um, if you love the outdoors, there's everything you can think of uh, to do out here. It is a wonderful part of the country. We're also only a two and a half hour drive from Vancouver, Canada. You can see the Canadian border up to the north here. 
Um, so that is exactly where we are located. Um, and then there's a photo of the Seattle skyline, very pretty Mount Rainier in the background. Um, so we're, we're home to, to many, many things um, that are natural. Uh, you guys like hiking, skiing is only 45 minutes away um, during the winter time. And we have many small towns or villages in the surrounding area that are easy to get to um, with different festivals and events throughout the year. So if you have any questions about outdoors, I'm your, I'm your guy to, to ask. Um, and I, I like to connect students to um, the outdoors because that's where um, I get a lot of energy. So in addition to the outdoors, like I said, we're a, a metropolitan area. So we've got so many cultures, um, languages and communities that are represented here. Uh, so you're gonna be able to find familiar food um, and people and language uh, if you need some comforts from home. Uh, we also are home to many uh, famous companies, Amazon, Starbucks, Boeing, Google, Microsoft, um, and many tech companies are moving into the area. So there's a lot happening in Seattle and there's so much available to you for um, life and opportunities um, alike. Here's a few photos of our campus, just to give you a brief overview. We have many more online. Uh, just wanted to give you a quick shot. This big room is our cafeteria here. And like I said, you could see the water, the, uh, the Puget Sound, the salt water coming in over here by our campus. So a little overview of our school. Um, the Puget Sound, like I said, you can take a look at and even see a little bit through this little window here. Uh, we're a public institution and we've been around for about 60 years. And we truly do uh, celebrate diversity. So our faculty, our staff, our students are so diverse. Um, I haven't been at this college for all that long, but um, th there's over 150 languages spoken. And I saw this sea of diversity um, when I was on campus for the first couple times, it was incredible. Um, so this is a place that truly does celebrate diversity um, for all of its students and staff. And um, we are the most diverse college in the whole state and the fifth most diverse college in the entire United States. So um, it's not just something that's recognized here. It truly is celebrated in many, many ways. Um, so Highline has about 16,000 total students. Um, about half that are, are full time, uh, maybe a little more than half, maybe about 10,000. And total, we have about 320 international students. Uh, you can see these are the top five countries that are represented currently, and we have many more uh, that are represented below. And this is not a complete list. So we do have a diverse international student body as well, but we are quite small still. So you, you really do still get that special care that I mentioned early on in the presentation. You get that personalized attention and that time. Whoops, went a little too far there. Um, as I mentioned, we have our, our bachelor's of arts degrees and these are our six newest. Um, the top three are quite popular. So cybersecurity and forensics, global trade and logistics and our newest is integrated design. Um, so you've got some options here if you decide to stay for four years and are interested in some of these um, programs in particular. Um, so I wanna kind of highlight a few other benefits of coming to our school. Um, and these are, these are quite unique, is that uh, number one, international students register first every quarter. So when you go to college, um, every quarter, there's a certain date where you are able to get into the registration process and find your courses and select your, your schedule for each quarter. Um, the nice thing is out of the 16,000 students that we have total, you are one of the you know, 300 students who, who get first choice at their courses. So this kind of assures you that you're gonna get a, a, a favorable schedule every quarter. Uh, so that's a really nice thing to have and, and not have to worry about. Um, I have worked for other schools in our state for about eight years, 
Uh, what has been very impressive to me is the student engagement and activities that happen on the Highline campus. Um, many, many opportunities to get involved. Uh, we'll touch on those in, in just a minute. Um, and we're going to go into a little bit more detail about the rest of this list, but um, the Honor Scholar Program, uh, we have that. Uh, as I mentioned, we have university transfer opportunities. Um, we do have on-campus employment, some small scholarships, and students can pursue a little bit more paid work um, or unpaid work, depending on what they're looking for, uh, by coming to uh, Highline. Uh, we do have our high school completion program, which I won't go into more detail than I already have. Um, but the unique part about this program is that, I, like I mentioned, we have zero additional requirements. You're literally checking a box now. Um, as of last July, some state legislation passed allowing students to get their high school diploma uh, upon completing their associate's degree. And not all schools have uh, these requirements or lack thereof. Some schools will have an additional high school program with more requirements, more testing. Uh, so this is a very uh, nice opportunity. Uh, we also are gonna chat about our campus dormitory that we have. So like I said, there's many, many opportunities to get involved. Uh, we have over 100 clubs and organizations um, on campus. And while we're in session, uh, we have weekly campus activities. Uh, right now, it's been a little bit tough as you know we're living in the, the virtual world and the virtual space, but we're still doing, um, we're still doing activities uh, from time to time, depending on the, on the group or organization as best as, as best as they can during, uh, during COVID. So we also have um, a GSA, which is Global Student Ambassadors, um, International Leadership Council, and we also are participating in Model United Nations every year. So a lot to do. Um, we also have many volunteer opportunities as well. And all of these are very important uh, for you students coming to a community college because like I mentioned earlier, if you're transferring to university, you wanna show them that you are an awesome student. And not only do you have good grades, but um, there's more to you. You have more skills, you have more ambitions. Uh, so all of these give you that opportunity to show the universities um, who you are and how, how you like to get involved. We've got student services. Um, in addition to our international programs office, we have various tutoring centers, which is just above our building, um, as well as intercultural and transfer centers. Um, and then the last one would be, um, you know, Center for Leadership and, and Student Service. So plenty of support offices that can help you in these various areas while you're a student. Um, and we really do have a lot of involvement as an office with our students. Um, and they're starting to reach out to our new students before they even arrive. Um, and now we're, we're doing an airport greeting service so, and have been for a couple of quarters now. So if you come in, um, at a reasonable hour of the night, we will have our staff members come to pick you up personally from the airport and drive you to the school um, or the dormitory. Uh, we do orientation every quarter, so that's gonna be there. It's a great time to meet new students. Um, and we do have four quarters a year. Uh, our summer quarter starts here in about 10 days. Um, and so we're still going to be active. And for now, I believe our summer quarter is going to be online orientation again. But we're, we're very hopeful for fall um, that that will be face to face again. So I mentioned our honors scholar program, all right? There are not many schools in the state that have their own honors program. This is a great opportunity for high achieving students. Um, you can self select into the program but you need to maintain a 3.5 GPA. So there's a couple requirements. You have to take 35 honors credits um, as in order to graduate an honors scholar. And if you do, this kind of opens you up for more scholarship opportunities. So just to give you a sense of how well these students are doing, our honors scholars annually are receiving about $1 million in student scholarship offers per year. Um, so that's quite a lot of money 
and uh, dispersed amongst the group. And so this, this again is another great opportunity to set you apart from other applicants to university. So um, this is a great option to have. Um, as I mentioned, uh, we've got students transferring um, to schools all over the country. This is a very small list, but some big names here that we did include. Uh, just as in some examples, and we've got other information I can connect you with if you want more examples. But the associate degree is transferable to any school in the US. So it makes it very easy to transfer um, to other schools. So you can achieve big things. Uh, some of these schools on the list, they are not easy. This is not an easy road, nor is, are these schools a guarantee, but it can definitely be done and you have all the resources at your disposal to make that happen. Um, as I mentioned, we have the transfer partner university. So um, as I, I think I referred to them as transfer ad acceptance or admission guarantee. So this list of schools um, are our partner institutions. And like I mentioned, if you, if you receive your associate's degree from Highline, and you meet their minimum GPA, they will automatically accept you into their university. So this is a great set of options for you, but you don't have to attend any of them. And, and something that you will want to focus on and pay attention to uh, when you're looking at a university, whether you come to community college or not, you don't wanna necessarily just look at their, their ranking and be like, oh, they're ranked number 60, I'm going there, like I really wanna go to that school. You need to find Okay, what, what program am I studying? So I'll give you an example, I'll, my own example. I studied international business. And so I, I actually went to one of our partner schools, Washington State University, uh, because their international pro business program was ranked 16th in the nation at the time. And I think it's still ranked about the same now. Um, so, you know, they have other better programs, higher ranked, and maybe the university isn't number 60, it could be 120, but they specialized, one of their specialties was, was my program. So um, I wanted to make sure that um, I, I go to a school that has a good program and I benefited greatly from that. So that's kind of one, one thing you wanna consider when you're choosing um, what university to attend. We also bring universities to our college uh, twice a year. We have over 50 universities come and they're just there to meet with our international students. So they come from all over the country. Our partner institutions will be there as well. And you can ask them questions about admissions, scholarships, anything, you're, anything your heart desires. You can, you can ask them about their school. So um, this is super convenient and a, and a really fun day uh, that we have twice a year. Um, Paid work. So if none of you have heard of OPT or optional practical training, this is available to students studying in the US um, that complete a degree. Okay, so you have a number of degrees. We'll use a couple for this example, for, for this conversation. You can, you can get a bachelor's degree. Let's just say you go to university. You can do 12 months of paid work experience. So you, you can have a job for 12 months, get paid if you go direct to university and fitness once you finish. But if you come to community college, we also have a degree, which is an associate's degree. So you can do OPT after you finish your associate's degree, then you transfer to university, finish your bachelor's degree, and you can do OPT again. So this gives you, by coming this route, you get two opportunities uh, to get this paid work experience. All right, so it's kind of a cool cool option. You're getting double the, the opportunity here as well. Um, there's a few uh, examples of where our students have gone to, to work after they graduate. Um, there are many more examples than this, but these are some of the big, big well-known names um, across the world. Um, I mentioned we do have scholarships. They are small. Most community colleges, if they do offer scholarships, will also be quite small. Uh, that's mainly due to the tuition cost because, as I mentioned, our tuition is relatively low compared to university. 
So these are available three of the four quarters. They're not available in the summer quarter. Um, it is competitive and there are GPA requirements, but one's called a, an engagement scholarship and one is an academic. The academic is more focused on just your GPA and the engagement has um, a bit to do with your GPA, but also we need to make sure that you have an involvement. It, it deals with your involvement on campus, whether that's working or volunteering or being part of a club. Um, so it has a little bit different focus. So each of these can be awarded twice. So it's possible that you can get four scholarships maximum while you are a student at Highline College. These are not available for our new students. You have to be enrolled for one quarter before you are eligible for these scholarships. Uh, we've got housing opportunities, um, a few interesting ones, mainly our dormitory, but if you're not familiar with homestay, this is the most economical and I think it's a really great experience to have that relationship with an American family because they help you improve your English. They help show you the local area and you can learn a lot about American culture uh, by living in um, a home of an American. Um, so we have a couple of companies we work with who do all of that work and they work to find you the most suitable family. And it's about $850 a month for homestay and they give you three meals per day. So that's what makes it very affordable. Um, if you want, if you're more independent, you can choose to live in a shared house or apartment with friends or other students. Um, usually you have to get all the furniture for those uh, houses or apartments and you're gonna be doing the cooking and grocery shopping. Uh, so this could be a little bit more depending uh, cost wise, could cost more depending on how you like to live and uh, how would you like to furnish your, your place. Uh, now the dormitory, so we have, or we like to call it student residence hall. Um, we call it campus view. So it's, it's only for students. So we'll hop into this. This is our campus view building. It's brand new, it's only a year old and we have 160 beds here. They are two and four bedroom units and they come uh, with a with a bed, a desk, a chair, but the nice and and fully furnished in the living room as well. Um, you have a couch and chair, so some, some some simple things. But the nice thing about these is that it it looks kind of like an apartment because you get your own private room, uh, but you still get all the amenities of a dormitory. So there's a a resident advisor. There's a lot of activities and programming. Uh, for all the students that stay here. So only our English language students at our Kaplan School, uh, our Highline students, and our university uh, branch campus students can stay there, which is Central Washington University. Um, so only students, and these are the prices for one academic year or per quarter. Um, what's nice also is the rent includes all of these things below. So. Um, you don't have to worry about setting up uh, different bills for, you know, electricity, your Wi-Fi, um, any of that. So any of this information can be sent over to you, links, if you want to take a closer look at that. Um, and we'll take a quick peek at the tuition. So um, for one year, we're looking at about $20,000 and it's broken down into tuition and living expenses. Okay, so $10,700 is for a full-time load, for a credit load for three quarters, and this living expense is the cost estimate for three quarters as well. Um, the Bachelors of Applied Science, if you students are wanting to pursue that, it's a bit more uh, for tuition than what we have stated here. Um, for those students who are applying for summer and fall, we can waive your application fee. It's usually $54, but we are waiving this fee temporarily. So uh, there are the dates here. Like I said, summer quarter starting next week, probably. Um, it's still possible, you know, right now it's, it's a very interesting, it's unprecedented. And, and as you may know, we have students from around the world that are 
studying full time online at colleges and universities in the US. Uh, that has not been possible before for undergraduate education. So um, we are having new students start from their home countries in summer. And it's also possible this might extend to fall, but we are, like I mentioned, hopeful that we'll be back on campus by, by the end of September, if not sooner. So I'm about done here with my presentation. Um, I did wanna put my email up here for any of you students who would like to reach out and would like to contact me directly. Again, my name is Will. Uh, we also have a general email box you can, you can send questions to. So um, that is all I have for you today. I appreciate your time and I would be very happy to answer any questions at all uh, about studying in the US, community college, Highline College, uh, exploring the outdoors like I mentioned earlier, um, all of that. Айдана, Анара, Жаркуль, пожалуйста, спрашивайте свои вопросы. У нас очень мало. Вы можете сделать амьют и спросить свои вопросы. Замечательно. Анара, да. Если есть вопросы, можете сделать амьют и все спросить. Uh, thank you very much. I actually received all information needed. Uh, I was here just to receive information about community colleges in general. And uh, I'm looking for several options. And I have people who will be interested. If I will have more questions, I believe I can contact Will. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. Thank you, Anora. I'm glad that, uh, that this was useful for you. It's actually interesting that uh, you have a uh, dorm because most community colleges do not offer that. So that can be like uh, one of the good things for students, especially when we're talking about undergrads. So having a dorm right. is crucial. Yes, yes. Um, I think I didn't mention it's, uh, it's, on, it's on campus, which is nice too. It's like 60 seconds walking and you're in the, the center of campus. Um, so we're, we're very excited to be there. And I know that's a big um, item on students' checklists as they consider different schools. So um, yeah, we're, we're very happy to have that. And uh, it's, it's quite attractive to, to prospective students. Um, and, and it's certainly nice to have that programming um, around the, the student housing as well. Um, and actually it was the first time when I heard that community college has an honors program. So uh, oh. every student can just join and then um, depending on their GPA, they will stay, like remain in the list or leave, right? Right, so yeah, that, that's kind of, it's unique that we have an honors program at a community college. Um, and it's also unique that it's a self-select program. So students can kind of push themselves to get into the program, but they cannot graduate as an honors scholar um, unless they maintain that GPA and, and also have to take those 35 credits. So they can, they can decide in the middle of their um, studies that they're like, okay, well, this is too much for me. Um, or um, maybe they're not even in the honors program and they're doing very well. And they're like, oh, I'm, I'm very close to being able to, to, to be in this. So then they can, they can jump into the program uh, while they're studying. So it's, it's definitely a highlight. Um, and like I said, a, a very good opportunity to set themselves apart um, from other applicants at, uh, at university. Especially when they're like trying to transfer to a uh, university, like four year college or university. I had lots of students who were um, going to community college because uh, they were not ready at that time, but they still wanted to study at some like top schools and they just needed some extra um, preparation. So they would do that. This is actually good because I have never heard that uh, community college has an honor program. Um, yeah. Dana, maybe you have some questions. Вы можете спрашивать по-русски. Um, if there's, I don't know if there's going to be any, any more questions, but if there's something else, uh, Raushan, that, 
you'd like me to speak to or if any of the students would like me to, to talk more about, I, I'm happy to, to go back over anything that maybe was confusing um, or needed more explanation um, or just talk about something different that I did not cover um, as well. Thanks, Anara. I see your message here. It looks like we've got some questions perhaps in the chat box. Um, no, we just, we have some quiet participants today. Ah, oh, I, I'm seeing, um, I have some uh, questions oh. actually from Aidana, but it's, uh, I didn't realize, I just looked at the chat box. So um, Aidana, I didn't see these questions while I was making my presentation. Um, you're very welcome. And it looks like you have questions if um, if you want to enroll to State University after community college, where tuition is different for for out of state students, will I pay the same amount of money as residents? So um, I can speak to that to a degree. Um, most colleges or state uh, institutions, you will need to pay a non-resident or out of state tuition rate. Um, but I do know that there are some schools right now that are are lowering their tuition because they um, during during COVID. Um, so they might have an offer for some international students for in state tuition. Um, so I know uh, Minnesota, there's at least one branch at Minnesota. Uh, I don't know if it's Minnesota State, but if you if you'd like to uh, include your email in here. I can follow up with you on what school that is specifically. But just to answer your question, there are some schools that offer in-state tuition and are not um, too much more expensive than uh, the, the tuition at Highline. But those, those aren't many that I know of. It's just, uh, I know of like one or two, but the vast majority you're gonna pay, you're gonna pay more money. And as an international student, um, you, you are a non-resident. Um, and will remain that way unless unless the the college or university has decided, hey, like I'm mentioning now, we're going to offer for this temporary time um, in-state tuition for our international students. Um, so I hope I hope that answers your question. And looks like you have another couple questions here, uh, which was after graduating community college in Washington, can I enroll to any university at any state? Yes. So like I mentioned, the, the associate's degree, once you complete that, it makes it very, very easy to transfer because schools across the country will recognize this degree because um, it, it, we have many community colleges around the country. And so this is a very common way to enter university. Um, so it's, it's easier to transfer after you complete an associate's degree than if, let's say you come in and you study for one year and then you transfer to university. It's possible, but the nice thing about completing an associate's degree is that you get um, the vast majority, if not all of your classes um, easily transferred over to that university. Um, so it's to answer your question, yes. Um, and it looks like there's a third question here. Uh, when can I use my OPT and for how many years? So there is a time limit. Um, I'm not a specialist, but I believe there's a window of time after you receive your uh, degree. And I think it's about 60 days where you need to begin. It could be 90 days um, it, where you need to begin your work. So I could check with my colleague if you want to know specifically, but uh, you more or less, you need to quickly, you have a, a small time window after you graduate or complete your degree where you need to um, enroll in OPT. So that is typically done as you're preparing to finish your degree. You're working with your advisors and you're trying to uh, set up an opportunity for that OPT experience. Um, so one thing I didn't mention in the presentation, so um, First of all, uh, you're, to answer your question for how many years, you can do it for 12 months. That's the standard uh, for OPT. But if you're a STEM major, which is science, technology, engineering, or math, you get an additional, it's at least additional 12. It could be up to 15, but more or less, it's an additional year of OPT. So 
if you had one of those majors, science, technology, engineering, or math, and you finish your associate's degree, you could potentially work for two years of OPT before going to finish your bachelor's degree. And it's the same thing applies when you finish your bachelor's degree. If you are a STEM major, um, you can tack on an additional, you know, 12 to 14 or 15, something like that months um, to your 12 month OPT uh, that you have available, that all students have available. So that's a potential for four years of OPT experience if you go to community college. Um, so hopefully that was helpful. Um, feel free to shoot some other questions over. Um, and then I think, oh, that was from you, Raushan, that question in, I, it looks like Russian. Um, yes, I was just saying that if they need any extra explanation, then I can explain in Russian language. Um, okay. I met Anara before. Um, she, she actually lives in Ghana. And uh, I, I, Idana lives in Ghana. Anara, Anara. Uh, oh, Anara. Ah. It's like fluent in English. And her mom was an active participant at the American Corner in Astana. <laughs> so, mm. very, uh, kind of like interesting family. Wow, so, uh, very international. So, is, was she tuning in from Ghana or? I'm not sure because maybe she lives in Kazakhstan right now, but I know that. Um, like she lives in Ghana and um, like she got married there. So she lives there. Uh, Interesting. Um, but she, so, she works well with Education USA in Ghana. Ah, I so is she like an agency has, or something? I'm not sure, to be honest. Hmm. I just know that uh, my colleague in Ghana knows her. So it's like, <laughs> Well, interesting, you know, how you meet one person and that person has uh, like know someone in Ghana and you also know that person. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> there oh, was funny. one, uh, I think it was like NAFSA or Education USA Forum. Oh, it was International ACAC. And um, okay. one school counselor who is an American, but he works in Kazakhstan. Um, he went to that international ICAC and um, my colleague from India, she also went to that uh, conference. And like, just all of a sudden, I received a photo on uh, like Facebook from that guy. And to be honest, I think I saw him only once in my life. And somehow we're friends on Facebook. Uh, and there was like their picture, her and him. And then I talked to her she was like, Oh, when I heard that uh, he's coming from Kazakhstan, I just asked him if he knows Roshan and he knows you. I was like, really? <laughs> just uh -huh. ask random people from Kazakhstan if they know me and somehow they do. Uh, we have a person in Vienna. Um, she just tuned in. She just joined. Yeah, I saw, saw her hop, hop in. Лера, мы вообще почти завершили. У вас есть какие-то, может быть, конкретные вопросы? Looks like she doesn't have a microphone on, at least at the moment. Yeah. Uh, uh, but I'm sure that she can probably watch this online. Yeah, um, yeah. That, that would be great. And it would also be great to get the recording um, as well, uh, if mm -hmm. possible. Um, I also wanted to let you know, and I don't know if I sent this over to you or not, but I did make a recording of myself uh, that's 15 minutes. It's it's a bit shorter than today's presentation, uh, but I did have it uh, made with Russian subtitles. So if students don't want to tune into a longer format, um, they could they could follow along um, in Russian. Maybe their parents could could find it useful as well, um, and yeah, maybe get information that way. Okay, I think it's actually a good idea. It, uh, maybe you actually sent it to me like last time. I need to check it. Uh, uh -huh. But I will upload this recording to our YouTube channel. Uh, okay. We have a YouTube channel and we have about 50 videos. And it's going oh, well. Great. About 800, uh, like 800 followers, subscribers on our YouTube channel. Oh, awesome. So it's not bad. Okay. Um, thank you. Oh, that's, that's great. 
And What's that? Thank you a lot for leading this uh, presentation. Yes, thank you. Thank you so much for having me. Um, yeah, it'd be great to chat um, outside of the presentation. I, I, I really appreciate um, your time, though, and, and setting this up. I know it's evening time there. You probably are ready to, to start getting ready for winding down and head, heading to bed, maybe. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'd say you're probably getting ready to, to go to sleep here pretty soon. Uh, it's, uh, it's, what, 9 p.m. over there, I, I believe? I'm actually having another session in 10 minutes. <laughs> oh my gosh. Oh no. <laughs> yeah, it's just so my students, they were like, oh, we want to discuss one uh, thing. And I was like, okay. <laughs> <Let's do it." laughs> so, okay. Um, bye bye. Okay, bye, Rosham. Thank you so much. Bye. -bye. Thank you very much. Bye. -bye.